Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a half time enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Let me get this out of the way. And in today's episode, I'm going to be recording pretty much well all of my plans. Well, maybe all is an overstatement, but most of my plans. Because I've been moving in here, a lot of them have been in a setup that was suitable for the previous home. For example, all these Kalites here were in terracotta pots, which means that they get rained on every single day in my old house. However, in here, when we water them daily, they dry out. This is actually midday in around 2 p.m. right now. Everything is bone dry. We watered everything deeply this morning. So there's also a balcony area upstairs where I've picked up a lot of plants and moved them downstairs. Basically, a lot of them are already root bound or a lot of them are drying out way too fast or some of them do need a bit of propagating and a, bit, a little bit of rescuing. So yeah, we're gonna be doing that in this video. It's gonna be a very long episode. There's gonna be a lot of root porn. In this episode, we're gonna learn a lot about plant care, about root health and repotting in general. So let's just get this started. All right, some of you all might find this interesting, but this is a variegated monster that's reverted to all green. And I actually dedicated this to a pile that was going to my neighbor. But I've noticed right before giving it away that there was a stripe in the last leaf here, where the new leaf would come from. So I predicted there might be variegation. And lo and behold, look at the new leaf. I'm not going to open it now, but it is going to be very wonderfully variegated. You can actually read from the back of the petiole. I have a video that shows you how to read variegation just from looking at the stem. So feel free to check that out. But yeah, this plant is still variegated. <laughs> Thankfully, I did not give it away yet. But anyway, this is one of the plants that I will be repotting today because uh, this is so hard. It's so bone dry even though we watered it today, but it's in need of a bigger pot. Look at that. Look at the back. Oh my goodness. And then we're going to be tucking all these aerial roots down into the new pot in a larger size. It's gonna be so happy after this. It's gonna be a very satisfying episode and hope that you guys will enjoy it. All right, let's go. So we need to open this up a little bit because this is missing the moss hole. It's not hitting the moss hole that's right. So we're gonna let it loose. And then there's this in the way. So you know, let me free the moss pole. Let me reposition this a little bit so that the new and adhere to the pole there. Or maybe we can get a bigger pole. We're gonna change the moss pole to something that is a little bit longer and bigger because now you know that the variety is gonna be upgraded to VIP. Okay. We've got some assistance here today. We've got someone to help pointing up, someone to hold the camera. <laughs> it's my lucky day. And after you repot this, you really want to water it a little bit less than before because it will hold on to a lot more moisture. But as I mentioned earlier, that previous potting situation was drying out way too much for the plant's benefit. And then where possible, you want to tuck the aerial roots into the pot. So, all right, so we're adding some, this is carbofuran, I don't recommend this. But it is my current method of pest control. And then there's some flow release fertilizer in there. For variegated monstera, you want to use balance NPK ratio for fertilizer. And we are all set for this. Here we have a Scandapsis snake scale. Beautiful, right? But it is a climber. This is a Scandapsis that does not want to trail. So we decided to free it onto this green wall over here. And cut a little bit of bonsai wire. Put the pot prepared. So what I'm going to do is this, and then I'm going to create a little loopy loop here, a little panel. And I'm probably just going to, let me see where I should put it. I think it's okay. Yeah, I think this is fine. With a plank. Okay, and I'm going to put it around here to a new home. See, look at how much nicer it is now. It's really fun. And then next, we're going to fill in the, the giving us a support here so that this hole stays. And then adding some potting mix here. And of course, we're going to be using some slow release fertilizer and a bit of that pesticide. I don't know the difference between this Scandaxis and also this Scandaxis tricolor. For me, I thought they were the same one, but this was given or sold to me as a snake scale. I can't remember who gave it or sold it to me. I'm sorry. Maybe it was Airy Garden, I think. Yeah, it's possibly that. 
All right, here is a Skinapsis Black Mamba. Black Mamba, I don't, I don't remember the name, but this is the close-up. It's beautiful, it's like dark leaf. This is also one that doesn't like the trail, I have a feeling. It wants to climb, it's a prolific climber. And I'm gonna show you the roots behind. So this moss pole is from Sejok Terra. I'm gonna link that on the screen right now. You can actually purchase it, but a lot of people do make this nowadays. Look at how beautiful the roots are back there. So what happens is that during the move, something cracked. I think we dropped this too hard, too fast. So water was leaking out of this. So I'm going to just be quickly repotting this ad hoc. So I haven't had to turn it out in my head yet. I'm going to take this out. And this leka is still usable. We can always wash it. And look at those beautiful roots. It's doing really well. Uh, and then let's see, well, how are we going to plant this? Because we can't plant this in here anymore. We might as well. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's do the obvious first because this has grown out of its hole. The most obvious thing for me to do now is just to cut it off, right? So what I can do is I can propagate this, probably in water. I'll show you quickly how I propagate my skin dapsis. This is a pop cutting. Single node. You can stick this in moss, but I think for me, because I have so much plants going on, I'd rather just do this in, in water and leave it alone. Just let it be. And the leaf is actually very dusty, so we're gonna maybe rinse it off with water. And then this is all going in water. Anyone wanna plant swap in three months' time? Please write me. <laughs> all right, so for this one, we're actually going to move it into a plastic pot. We might find a better cover pot later for it. But what's gonna happen when you do this is that the top here may actually put out secondary vines, but there may be other vines that come up from below. Technically speaking, I should have probably cut this all the way like down, down to here. Uh, maybe I'll do that, should I? You know what, I might. Okay, I might cut it. So I'm gonna cut it right here. And I might cut, I'm, I'm gonna cut notes. Okay. Let me tell you why in a minute. Because they, these are all individually rooted in here. So these can turn into individual plants after I've made those cuts. They're going to do really, really well here. So yeah. And because this is in LECA, I probably might have to water this every day. I might actually put it in a self-watering pot, like a cover pot where a little bit of water down here can live. So they can take up as much water as this plant needs. That is propagating water. And if I lose this one, it's not going to be the end of the world. Found a Vishkidia here, Vishkidia Ruskifolia. In this setup, I believe it was from Tamora, who gifted this to me. And I think this one is doing well. This is the front, this is the non variegated, this is the variegated. I might actually just put them side by side. Like this. Like that. Put them in. Because this is doing pretty well. Look at all the new growth here. And this will actually root into the media sometimes. If it's Conditions are right, this may turn into like a, I don't know if you know what I mean, it will root into this, possibly. It's more than welcome to do that. All right, let's now work on the Kalithia. There's a whole table of them here. Now, they were again rained on every day in my old home. They were rained very, very heavily. But then over here, they dry so fast. We watered it this morning and it's very, very dry. This is not so good for them. They do need to dry out a bit here, Kalithias cannot be dried out for completely for too long here, but then they also can be easily rotten in our climate. So this one, I might actually put this in a, this pot is still good for it, as you can see, there's still room for it to grow into it. I don't want to give it too big of a pot because if it retains so much water, it may also rot the, the plant. Here is a Kalithia black lipstick. It's actually much bigger than this before, but then the <laughs> we neglected it during the move and now it's lost a lot of foliage but hopefully it will bounce back and it should one of the better and one of the reasons why Kalekias in plastic pots are also a good idea is because sometimes when we water them they become a little bit compact and what we can do when they get a bit compact is so we can just squeeze the pots and let some air movement go into the pot now you can't do that with terracotta pot but again if you're over water if you're a Kalekias living outdoors I recommend a terracotta pot when you cannot control the water because this will allow them to dry up between watering. But again, because I've moved them to care for indoors, I'm moving them to a plastic pot. 
And this will be watered pretty much daily, but very lightly every day, just to keep it lightly moist. And a Kalite silver plate. It used to do really well. It grew really big because it was rained on every day. It was a terracotta pot in my old home. But now, oh, it's having a very difficult time. We lost a lot of leaves. They are dried out very, very quickly, very often. There's actually a little bit of mealybugs, but that is okay. So we're going to move it in here in a plastic pot. It's slightly, slightly larger, which means it's going to hold a bit of moisture and then we'll give it a bit of height actually. And then we're gonna care for it. So the current situation that we are in now, this is actually semi well you you can call this outdoor but it's technically speaking indoors. It's a backyard with a full uh, glass or plastic canopy on top so rain cannot get in and it's slightly filtered so full sun cannot get in here as well. But the plants really do dry out very fast in my current situation, and I cannot have them in terracotta. I cannot water them twice a day, if you know what I mean. And this is done. This one is done. Look at how beautiful it is in its new setup. And then next, we're going to be working on this one. There's a clump. There's a whole clump. Of, there's a few plants in here. This means that this probably used to be a bigger plant, but we pruned it off in our last episode because it just did not do well. Here's what the roots look like. So Calatheas have really, really fine roots. And when you have plants with the roots so fine, it means that they don't want to dry out too much. But again, in my condition, Calatheas can rot very easily. All right, so maybe this is the right size plot for it. Not bad. So Calatheas, they will bush out a lot. Give me time to get them to bush out again. I have a video on the Calatheas, which I'm going to link up above. It was done I think, a few years back before my colleague has suffered in my temporary home because of neglect. They were literally just rained on, so they were like barely hanging in there. And then there's this colleague here. It died back and now it's put out this new vine. All right. I'm just going to move it, just move it to another pot and check out the roots. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of roots. A little bit of pot to this size. There are some mealy bugs in here. Hello. But we, we can treat them. So the pesticide that we add to it will help it along. And also we do spray this down quite a bit with neem oil. So that will help as well. This is actually a bit too porous because the original media was very, very fine. So let me mix in my own media, sorry, one more time, one more time. So that it's, it's a little bit more porous, a little bit more airy. They like it airy, they actually do love airflow here in my region. I know that Kaylee Allen once mentioned that the Calatheas, they already cannot withstand, uh, they cannot withstand drafts. But here, they love it. They love it when there's where they can be bouncing and dancing around because they will rot very easily here if you don't give them that airflow. So the care for Calathea is actually quite different depending on where we live. But again, generally speaking, you don't want to let them dry off for too much, but you don't want them to be sitting in compacted soil either. Just a little bit more. This is also very, very easy. Just look at all of the calatheas that we've repotted so far. They're so dry. Look at this. This is super dry. Their leaves are curling. We watered them this morning. So this is a terracotta pot. It's not, it's not serving them well. So yeah. Uh, as a general rule, plastic pots hold on to moisture about twice longer than terracotta pots, generally speaking. Baby honey coming out from here. This is the Calathea White Fusion. This is actually a bit wet. A little bit wet. It's weird. Okay, this one I'm worried because this is actually not dry. So sometimes maybe it needs a maybe a smaller pot. Yeah. If you have a smaller pot versus a big pot for a root this root ball this size, this is gonna hold just the right amount of water and this is holding on to too much water. So it really helps to have just the right size pot. Also, you use less fertilizer, you use less pesticide when you are giving them the, the perfect size pot. So we want to be a little bit more sustainable, where possible, and look at that. This is not an easy one. So this is a Stromanthi, not a Calatheus. Stromanthi Star. 
this is the Calithia White Fusion. This was actually placed on the floor next to the Calithia, uh, the Stromanti Trial Star that we've potted up before. As you can see, there's not many roots, but it's holding on to a lot of moisture. So maybe the floor plants were getting a lot more water, maybe they're drying out a lot slower. But in this case, it could be very, very safe. I can either move this to terracotta pot or, let's see, what if I move it to a much smaller pot where it doesn't hang on to so much moisture. Yeah, as you can see here, there's still room around the pot for it to grow into. Look at how fine, look at how fine those roots are, beautiful. And then, now I'm gonna pop it, pop it up. Oh, with these plants, by the way, you can always, uh, one of the ways you can cut it here, cut it, stick it back, and the bottom, part where you cut it from, they will grow many, many tiny little baby plants. I have the video on this. Do look up the uh, Calithia White Fusion video on my channel. It was done two years ago. It's very satisfying to watch. And it shows you how to get back this variegation if yours has reverted to all green. It's a very, very good video on this uh, care and propagation. All right, with this Jopertia orbifolia, this leaf is so busted. I'll take it off. Take it off. And then, what's happening here, this is an orchid pot with lots of holes. So this is drying up fast, which is okay. We do water this every day. But I feel like it's drying up just a little bit much. So what I'm going to do is just add media. Add a bit of potting mix over the pot. It's going to hold on to that moisture a bit more, a bit longer. And then, I think that is done. It's going to be good for now. It's putting out a lot of new leaves. This is a new leaf. This one is a new leaf. So this is actually on the way to recovery. All right, this is the Calathea ornata, or Jopertia if you want to be correct. These are spider mites. Do you see that? So we've been battling spider mites for a very long time on this. I do spray it down. Now. I'm not sure if they are alive. I'm looking very closely now. They're not moving. It's potentially dead. Uh, and again, I spray this on very religiously. This one has suffered a lot of abuse. In my old home, this was actually living behind me during uh, when I was vlogging, it's in the, under the Monstera behind me. So it's getting very low light, but they do love low light because they have this beautiful stripes when you give them low light. But then the airflow there is so bad. So yeah, I, I, I need to make sure next time when I'm spraying new oil, I need to spray this down again. And I remember I do, I always spray this down with new oil, but this is one that is very, very spider mites prone. This is a Calathea. This has actually been with me for a very long time. Look at how beautiful this is. <laughs> it's very mesmerizing how it's unfurling. But this is drying out a bit way too fast. So again, every plant, every situation dries out differently and there's some strong parts. Is it alive? Is it alive? I don't know. I don't know. I think this is alive, but I, I, we gotta let this go. We've got a bunch of this upstairs. So I'm gonna move this because this is drying out a bit way too fast. Now, as you can see here, it's bone dry, and it's only midday, and I really don't have the time to water this twice a day. So this is going into a new pot. Let me separate this. This is actually two plants living in one. Ugh. This is how you pop propagate calithia, so you can just separate them by division. And then I'm going to move them into a plastic pot. This is actually a little bit too tight. Uh, just a little bit, but it'll do. If I had more time, I would probably have given it one size bigger for the pot. There you go. All right, sorry about the last clips. Apparently, I did not have my microphone on, so the audio is much more improved now. This is a Begonia Cleopatra, and this has actually not grown much until lately. Look at all this new growth that has come out of this. This was in my old home, again, in terracotta pot. Gets rain on every day, but since it's already doing quite okay here, I'm just going to top dress this with more media so that all these, this main trunk here can actually root into the media. This is also drying out quite a bit fast, so a little bit more media will help it along. All right, and back here, there's actually a whole row of begonias. I piled them up here during my first videos when I just moved here, but oh my god, there's something. A little baby grew out of this. <laughs> How cute is that? But I think this is drying out a bit fast. And also, I don't like the look of like a bit of terracotta here. I like it to be kind of all black. So I'm going to be moving this now. I'm going to be repotting this. 
into a pot and actually this pot is a bit too big for it as you can see this means now I have more terracotta pot than even before where was the baby? that baby in one here sorry there's a baby over here make sure that I don't lose it and then kind of pot them up a bit closer to one another okay and we want to make sure now that we've moved it here that we don't water it as much as before because it can retain a lot more water but that was actually drying out quite a bit we do water this every day this one here it's actually doing okay uh, it's growing growing but then again we're going to move it to a plastic pot to accommodate for the aesthetics let me look at the inside it's very dry this is very 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 dry so I think it would appreciate moving into a plastic pot maybe this size yeah this is gonna look so good when it recovers right now it's looking a little bit banged up from the move it was also underwater at some point because it was drooping for like a whole week or so it just perked up so welcome back hopefully this will do well more actually this one is quite precious and this one I don't know if this is gonna make it let me see I don't see any more below. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna make it, but let's see. So this was in a uh, bit of a moss situation. And then it's in this. Let me feel the soil actually. This is okay. It's very, very lightly humid. This is the kind of moisture that they love actually. But I'm going to disturb it and put it in a plastic pot for aesthetics and for space reasons. There's a, there's a big risk of losing this one. Actually, but I'm thinking I have this I think on the ground this is a duplicate I think the worst case scenario if I cannot care for it you know you know what actually this is looking bad I'm just gonna put it in my ICU area because I don't think I want this to go back to the, uh, to, the to the wall this is another begonia put out a tiny little little baby growth here and this one I'm gonna give it a plastic pot I'm gonna do something a bit of moss. I'm gonna take it out because the moss will attract too much water to it. So just a little bit of a baby action going on down here and for the top what I might do is snip. I'm gonna do a... I don't know where I'm gonna cut. Hang on. I don't know if these are still alive. That's the thing. I'm gonna cut about here. I'm gonna stick this back here. Back down here. Let's see. Let's start you over from the bottom. Yeah, and I'm gonna put this in my ICU unit. This one, let's check on this guy. This is doing well. I don't think I'm going to touch it. It's doing quite okay, actually. I'm gonna sp spoon some leaves, check on it a bit, and then aerate it. They love it when you aerate it a bit, and you give it like a bit of a movement, and then also maybe add a bit of media on top. There you go. This one, I can't move because I've secured it in place but this is a, actually very very dry this is very very dry look at that it's crisping and when you see leaves that are crisping like this and there's no yellow edge around here this is underwatering so I need to figure out what to do with this maybe you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just have a bit of moss that I had before and I'm gonna top dress this here the moss will actually seal in the moisture and let this pot take in more water than before and I think this strawberry begonia Saxifragia, I'm gonna move it. It does not look good there. And then, sorry, this is turning into a green wall video. There's a Monstera here, Monstera Xanthosparda. Uh, when I moved it here, when I planted it here a few months ago, this was actually only up to here, but now it's put up leaves and it's probably going to grow into the, the moss pole back there. So that's good. This one, this is a philodendron. Mame, and you can see how cute is this. Ta da! I think this needs repotting because I want to bury this so that it can live in the soil level. But then the problem is that the pot. This is the right size pot for for this position. So let me see if I can. Oh, look at that! Yeah, this I don't. I want this to be here, but I don't, I don't think it'll be happy. So let's move it to a bigger pot, and I'm gonna give it an aerate potting mix and bury it up to here. All right, so we're gonna pot this up. We've got an assistant to help us here, but meanwhile, I'm looking around at other plants that might need to be potted up. 
We repotted Begonia Manaus, and this is the back. It's prolific grower, it grows really fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swirl it around and kind of tuck it back into the pot. And at the same time, I might add more media in there so that they can root more into the media. Yeah, this is an out of control begonia. It's a beautiful one and it lives actually right here where all the pink plants are. This is an Anthurium pallidiflorum from Aquagenera. Let me check the roots. This is signs of infection, but the new leaves are okay, but I'm gonna leave that alone because they are still photosynthesizing. And sometimes air Anthurium can really grab onto terracotta. Wow, beautiful. This is beautiful, but you know what? I'm going to move it to a plastic pot for our sanity. They don't like water, so be careful when we water this. I'm reminding the ladies here who are helping me out as well. And you know what, there's room in there, there's some air here. I'm just basically gonna put some of the larger chunks here because it really hates water. It really hates water. So the bigger chunks, and I'm just gonna leave it be. Because as you can see here, the top here with anthuriums, uh, there's moss up here, so the moss will seal in the humidity. But b down below, down inside, there's gonna be a lot of pockets of air. And theorems really love that kind of arrangement. See here, there are like air pockets down there. Generally speaking for anthuriums, they really love it. They love having these pockets of like very chunky uh, medium and then I seal, I top dress the top with just moss. And I keep the moss slightly moist. So the bottom is actually never wet, never soggy, never compacted. And a lot of these anthuriums, they love it. This is an epiphytic uh, anthurium. This is a Ripsalis. We actually have a video on this. Look at the baby leaf here. How cute is that? So cute. And then there's another one here that I brought from the nursery. We had some leftovers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix them together. They're quite forgiving with watering. So I'm gonna put this in a plastic pot because it would look much better in a plastic pot. And they do need it very tight. And they do need it very tight in their pots because otherwise it's easy to overwater them. Put it in here and then this one, I'm gonna combine it. It's actually a little bit too wet. This is too wet. <laughs> too wet for it. So anyways, I had the whole team come here to, to film and to help with the repotting so that everyone can understand the roots and the moisture levels because I believe when we do repot the plants, we understand them a lot better. We have a better meaningful relationship with them and we know how to water them. That's the most important thing. We know how the root structure works and we can feel the soil to see how much of the soil they actually, how much of the water they actually drink up because every day and every species, they drink up different amounts of water all the time. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Give it time. This is pretty ugly now, but give it time. It's gonna look good. It looks, it'll probably trail into one direction. This is an Anthurium clarinervium. As you can see, they are growing a little bit out of their pot. I remember this actually dries out a little bit too much, but for Anthuriums, I wanna top dress it like that. There you go, they love, they love this situation. So this is a Philodendron squamiferum. Look at how cute it is, the first few leaves are still there. But this is the root structure, and I think I'm gonna add a bit of moss. It is drying out a little bit too fast, it's getting very rowdy here in a, in a small pot. So a little bit of moss will help them retain a bit more moisture, and then this will hopefully grow onto the moss pole up above, but we need to give it time. Right now it's still in the rosette form. So we have this Piper Bright Eyes. It's actually dried up a lot. We do water this almost every day. Let me unpot it right now and right here. And see what I'm gonna do with this is, I might actually just plant it right back here. Yeah, I'm gonna plant it right back. And then, well, I, I'm actually going to secure the vine with something, secure it down to the wall so that it doesn't flop over. But we do need to keep an eye out for watering for now because this, when we move plants like this, they tend to get too dry from a, yeah, there you go. I'm gonna fix this, but off screen, I guess, because it's gonna take a long time. All right, we've got this philodendron sodoroi. Someone commented on my Instagram that there's a really good supplier and it's very cheap. If I remember, I'll try to link it up above, but I bought this and it's got no mosaic virus. It's doing really well. So it uh, shipped to me like a month ago, but I was busy. I was really busy with the move and it's doing really well. So I'm gonna plant this thing up as a whole. I'm not even going to 
change the media. The whole ball is moving into my green wall. There you go, and it's a climber. So this is my silver section. So there's a Brantianum, there's a Epipramnum Amplissimum. This one, I do need to tie this up over here, <laughs> like that. Uh, but yeah, this is my beautiful silver corner. I'm gonna take this one leaf off. So this is a beautiful fern that I moved to this home pretty late, about a month ago, but it just kept dying back. And as you can see, the media is very dry. It's very lightweight. Some of the new fronds may even fail to unfurl. Let me check out the inside. Yeah, this is what the inside looks like. It's very, very dry. We do water this every day, but well, I think one of the solution would be, let me see, it's not that root bound. It's just the media actually is drying up a little bit fast. And maybe the condition here is much drier than it was before. So I'm gonna take some of the fronds. Like this is a very, very dry frond. I'm gonna take it off because it's drinking water and it's dying back very quickly and it's not sightly at all. And then I'm probably just going to top dress this. This is a very fast temporary solution. Uh, top dress this with moss. Of course, you could repot this into like a whole new substrate, but one, you risk losing the plant because it's probably got very delicate roots. You could also repot it to a much bigger pot, but I don't know if I have some room for a bigger pot. So I'm gonna uh, keep it in moss, and then as you can see, whenever we water it, it's gonna hold on to moisture a lot longer, probably twice longer than before. So this is a Peperomia argyria that we planted up here, and it was actually very long, but then oh, these are the original leaves. They were drooping really hard, so we're just gonna cut it off because the new growth here, as you can see, is doing really well. It looks much better. It makes more sense this way. Now, this is a Begonia geogenensis or Natioenensis. I'm not sure. It could be either, but it's always dry. I water it twice a day. Look at how ridiculously dry this is. It was actually living in a plastic pot before. There's a lot of Kalenkoe living here. There's some moss that came along with it. Look, it's beautiful, intricate moss, actually. I used to live in a plastic pot and it did really well and I did the stupid thing of moving it into a terracotta pot. So I'm gonna move it back into a plastic pot. I think this is one that is a bit more moisture loving, especially in my new condition now. Right, this is a little bit too big of a pot, but yeah, just gotta be a bit more careful again with watering. If you move it to a big si bigger size pot suddenly, you don't want to drown it too fast. You just wanna increase the moisture lightly and this main stem here should put out roots or maybe even more vines out of it but we cannot suddenly change an environment of a plant if you know what I mean it's already stressed out enough that now the main stem is buried so I need to be careful not to overwater this for the next few weeks this is a beautiful bat piper and I think it got scorched a little bit it was living in much lower light than before this is what the roots look like on the inside. It's putting on a new leaf, but it's failed to unfurl. This is not gonna make it. I'm gonna try to rescue this. Hopefully it'll make it. I might actually do, let me see, I might actually do moss because it can control the moisture a bit better. And with moss, you really wanna keep it very uh, loose. You don't wanna compact it, keep it airy. And then we wanna keep it uh, like lightly watered almost every day. But this one, I have a feeling it's particularly quite thirsty, this plant can't let it dry out completely either. Just keep the media a bit humid. All right, we've got some beautiful Alocasia zebrina. And this is like one of my re last remaining ones because we sold quite a few of these. This is what the roots look like. And you know what happens with Alocasias? They do really well in soil. They do amazing. So I'm gonna just dig this. And then I'm gonna plant this actually a little bit deeper because they tend to grow upwards anyways and then bury it. All set. <laughs> that took like five seconds. Now this is a very, very sad looking Maranta. I think it's drying out too fast. The pot is a bit too deep. Let's see the inside. Yeah, it's drying out too fast in this terracotta. So let me see what we can do. We forgot to prune this in our last video. We missed out this plant. I'm gonna prune them real quick. Take off all the dead foliage gonna feel amazing doing it. I love plant care. This is why I set out to do the channel, to share experiences like this with you guys. Rehab rehabbing plants, rescuing them. Something like this you want to cut off. Too much damage, too much infection, too much drama. <laughs> 
Okay, took off a lot actually. Yeah, this leaf failed to unfurl. Actually, it failed to unfurl. Poor thing. This one, I'm going to take off the yellowing leaf and hope that I'm going to be on the way to recovery after this. And then we're going to pop this up. One size bigger, this came right off. I hope you do well, I hope you recover. Alright, next we have a Fetonia here. It's looking really, really sad because it's always thirsty. It's very, very thirsty and we water it almost once or twice a day. Oh my god, it's barely even in the root actually, but the, the soil is quite dry. So yeah, actually no, hang on, this is a little bit moist, this is okay. But I think the problem is that the root, the, the soil is compacted. So a lot of the surface area here is not in contact with the root anymore. I think that's what's one of the problems. It grew out away from its base. So what I'm gonna do is just pile up, pile it up with soil and then let it hopefully root into the soil. But there's, this is actually a risky procedure very very risky procedure <laughs> and I'm rushing I don't know if you can tell but I'm rushing through this yeah but if you know what I mean this needs to be in the soil it needs to be in contact with the soil and it's going to root hopefully if it doesn't rot or dry out by now between now and then yeah, so watch out so sometimes when you water a plant too violently the soil can really compact and yeah good luck Celia amabilis. Look at how gorgeous this is. Look at the underside and the leaves. What a beautiful plant. It's coming into the market quite hot, but people are growing it. I'm figuring out how to propagate it, but give me time. I have a feeling you can just cut the stem up and then propagate it. But this is living in a terracotta pot. I moved it here from a plastic pot. Look at how dry the inside is. This is very dry. So I'm going to move it back to a plastic pot because this plant the good thing about the Lea amabilis is that they droop when they are thirsty. So this is a plant that tells you when it needs water. And then I'm just going to pot this up. This is in my forest floor potting mix. And I'm going to plant it a bit higher so that maybe more roots can form. Because before the pot was only this short. And now I'm, I'm planting it a little bit higher. Again, when you suddenly change the pot size, you want to make sure you don't overwater it. Just don't water too much because the, the plant is used to less water before. We've got two more Lea. This is the green form of the Lea. And look at this new leaf here. Oh my God, how beautiful. And then the back is actually a little bit red. But the back of the leaves, especially the new leaves. I don't know if you can get it on. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anyways, this is also be a little bit too dry sometimes. So we're going to be repotting one of them. This is the larger one. Very, very root bound. Very root bound in here. How beautiful. This is what the roots look like. It's actually medium. It's not too fine. It's not too thick as well. This is a plant that is probably forgiving when you see a root system like this. I don't think it's a difficult plant. This pot is dirty. It's got an earthworm living in there. Hello. But I'm going to just use it because I don't think the previous plant had any kind of pathogens on it. So, and we're on a roll here. Don't follow me if you have more time. Do please do wash the pots off if you have the time. But for me, I got to move on. All right. This is this is the all set. This is a Calathea mosaica. I don't know if I should call it Calathea or Jopertia. Let me know in the comment down below. But let's get a closer look at this guy. It's actually kind of etoliating. It's lost a lot of the, I mean, it's, it's grown longer petioles and smaller leaves. So I can say safely that this is not getting enough light. It's only moved here a few months ago, so it hasn't responded to the current environment yet. But there are a lot of <laughs> dead leaves that I should actually take out beforehand. But let me quickly unpot it. Let me, hang on, but need to, <laughs> a lot going on here. Let me uh, uh, take these two leaves off because they were bent. These two leaves were bent. Maybe like they were, they were, and it's very dusty, very dusty. Uh, 
Maybe they were kind of going through, oh my god, look at that. They were going through a tough time out there, but during the renovation, they were outside for a while. This is a uh, need of repot, re actually. This is probably why the leaves are shorter. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of plants living in here. Technically speaking, you could propagate this and turn this into a few more plants and then maybe give them more VIP treatment Then they will like, give you a that bushy like this. This is what the bushy one should look like. So let me give you a, give it a bigger pot. Hang on, maybe this one. Yeah, this, this one is this. Is it the same? Hang on. No, it's, a, it's one size. Hang on. Oh, it's the same size. Okay, never mind. That happens. It's embarrassing. Okay, so I'm going to give it a bigger pot. But first of all, I'm going to massage it. Massage, massage. So that the loose ends like this can come out and then they can adhere better to the newer media. All right, and we are all set. Moving on to the aeroids. This one is actually doing okay. I just wanted to check on the roots. If, yeah, this is actually doing okay. This is the Anthurium Safari. I might, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig up some of the moss in the bottom of the pot and then plant this up back into the pot and then <laughs> use the bottom moss on the top so that they can root into the moss better. Yeah, because I think this is doing well. This happy now, so I'm gonna leave it in moss. Now this is my one and only El Choco Red. <laughs> First of all, these ferns need to come off. It's probably stealing a lot of the water and nutrients from the media, it's not helping it at all. And then these are the friends. I, do, I don't know if they're still, it might still be alive actually, but this one is gone. This one is a goner, this, yeah. So that's going away and then let's check out the roots. I have not checked on the roots at all, ever. Let me see what it looks like inside. And you know what, this might actually do really well in a closed situation. There is a bit of rooting action going on. He's dangling on to his dear life. Look at that. It's like die hard, mission impossible. <laughs> Hanging in there. So I might actually, I don't know, I'm tempted to put this in a prop box. I think I will actually. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. But I might also, I don't know if this is a good idea, add like a few drops of slow release fertilizer. And actually, I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm gonna take this off. Let me know if it's a bad idea to take off this caterpillars. I'm not sure, but I, I do that. I, I tend to peel scabs off my injuries when I have skin injuries. I do that. I don't know if I should, but I think this will benefit from being in a high humidity area. Yeah, so wish me luck on that. This is a schismatogodis. It hates this condition, I think. It was in my prop box before and it was so happy. It had the best time of its life. But I think this is drying out way too fast. At the babies, this is doing much better. Look at how gorgeous this is. So yeah, this is a plant that I think wants to live in moss. This is a deep understory plant. So I'm gonna move it into full moss. And of course, this is going into my... Uh, uh, it's going into a prop box to retain humidity. This is a plant that really loves love love humidity the babies actually have been grown in a in a moss situation in medium to low light and it's never let dry out at all and it's doing perfect so maybe this is a moisture loving aeroid for this one this is actually doing okay this is not the worst thing i'm trying different conditions this is uh, where the experiments happen the, the babies of these are three little babies grown in full moss they're doing really fantastic. But this one, as you can see, it's a little bit banged up, but it's living in aeroid potting mix. It's doing okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna top dress this with moss to test my theory to see if they really love to have that moss situation. So let's see. So I'm gonna have one in a prop box, one in this, and one that's living in full moss. Next, we have this apple ballis. And this one, it's a very thirsty plant. Very, very thirsty plant. This is not doing well. I think this is, oh, in fact, this is mush, I think. Yeah, I'm just gonna save the baby. This, this has been struggling for a long time. I'm gonna give up on it, but I'm gonna save the babies. There's another pot of babies in upstairs somewhere. So I'm gonna save this. They don't like to dry out. They are, I, I find that they're quite a thirsty plant, but too much can also rot it. I think this one might be, this one might be rotted actually. If you look at this, it might be raw, but no, th this is clean. The roots are clean. It's just very flimsy now. It's very flimsy and this feels mushy. 
It feels soft, it should be firm, but this is not rot. Uh, so I'm very confused. Honestly, I don't know the answers to all the plants, but this is definitely a species that I'm still studying very closely. It's beautiful, it's got like a Skindapsis type foliage, it's an Indonesian plant, but it is definitely an aeroid. This is a Skindapsis silver hero platinum, gorgeous plant, but it's dry, it's very, very dry all the time. We water it every day, but this is because there's a lot of plants living in one pot. Look at that, and there's not many media, that's why it's not holding on to enough moisture. So what I'm gonna do is this, I've moved it to a bigger pot now, and I'm gonna just use whatever media that I have laying on the table. This is not advisable, but for me, this is also pretty sustainable. It's a, it's a time-saving method, but I know that my media should be safe. So I'm gonna just reuse it. And then hopefully this will retain a lot more water than before because it's drooping really bad for a long time. But it does perk up after watering. So hopefully we don't have to water this as much as before. Yeah, there you go. This is an Anthurium SP Limon. Look at that, how cute. I think this is ready to go into soil. So I'm gonna put this in a little, little uh, plastic. Pot. This is fresh aeroid potting medium. And here's the trick about water propagated plants. Hang on, I'm gonna do one thing at a time. One thing at a time. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use the same water that was propagated and then put it back in. Because the water has some of the rooting hormones, it's used to the same temperature, the same, I don't know, the same everything, right? So the, this time it's not going to be in shock for now. This is an Anthurium pterodactyl baby that the siblings, oh my God, okay, came right off. Came right off, it's not even in the soil. So this might actually go in water. Yeah, this is probably the best to save in water. Let me check for past, no past, yeah. Yeah, this is going on to my Yakult propagation. But this is root. This is a single root. I thought this was the main stem. The roots are thicker than the stem. That's insane. All right, that's an ace of spades here. I remember repotting this about two months ago, but look at that. It's grown out of its container, out of its pot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check on the roots. Oh, oh, oh look at that. This is very nice. It's actually very healthy, but I'm gonna put it back in, I guess, because, let me see. What am I gonna do with you? I might actually, I might actually top dress this with a bit of moss because I want these roots to establish into something. I'm gonna top dress this. It's also like doing well. It's got a lot more leaves than before and it's always dry. So I'm going to give it just that extra bit of humidity around the root area. All right, this is an Anthurium papillilaminum. Honestly, can't remember who gave it to me, but this is a green sign. If you're the giver, please give me a shout out so I know who you are. Probably, I don't know, I might say probably, uh, what is this? Um, Tujuan Bumi maybe. Maybe you gave it to me, I don't know. But thank you for the plant. And it's doing well, the roots are doing okay, but this is a bit underwater. This is a little bit too dry for it. Moving it to a, another pot plastic pot this time. I might have overwatered this at some point, but I can't remember. I've overwatered nearly all my interior. They hate water, to be honest. They really do, but yeah. Let's see how this one does. Got a philodendron birkin. This is a cutting. I've got one living in the garden, but I figured I'll do one and I'll grow it from a baby. I love seeing little plants grow like this. A little baby plant. And then, you know, how am I gonna pot this up? Let me try to think this through. Let me see. And then I'm still trying out the media because it's so rooted well into the moss. I can't possibly separate it from the moss. So I might actually just grow this in full moss. You know what? I might as well do that. And then maybe keep this as an indoor plant. I might do that. And I wanna bury this a bit. So I need to be careful with watering because for this, it's very easy to overwater it in moss. Super easy. Try to have this in the center of the pot. And at some point this leaf, this one leaf is going away at some point. They don't last forever because they're the, the leaf that we used it during propagation. And I might want to prop the, this bit here. Just prop this up, give it an extra bit of support. Okay. 
All right, so this here, this is a Monstera Edinsonia. It was variegated down below and then it lost variegation. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give it a bit of a moth situation here. And then, can you guess what I'm about to do? Can you guess what I'm about to do? What I'm about to do? Okay. I should sterilize this. I should. But <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> Gotta keep going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut... Let me see. Cut above. There's like a node here. There's a little growth point here. I'm gonna cut above it. Cut. I'm gonna cut. Yeah. See, this is the root, this is the growing eye. So this is hopefully going to turn into many plants and hopefully one of them will be variegated. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of given up on this plant a long time ago. But this is the only way, one of the ways that you can get variegation back. And here's another pot that is variegated. You can see the stem here. There's variegation along the stem, but only on the lower ones. So I'm just going to cut it, cut it right here. And then maybe for these ones, I'll cut single node cuttings. Snap, snappity, snappity, snap. And then I'm, I might just stick this back into the same pot. Hang on. Like that. I've actually grown many, many, many pots of Adansonia this way. I have a lot of green ones that I've given to people, but they used to be variegated. And yeah, the chances of getting the variegation back is super duper low, super low. And this one, there's a top cutting here, tippy top cutting. I don't know what I'm gonna do. This is probably going to give me an all green Adansonia. I don't see, I don't see any variegation. I really don't. So I might actually just, nah, uh, oh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna stick it. <laughs> Stick it right here. Like that. <laughs> All right. So this is actually an Anthurium papillilaminum hybrid. It's a. It's from Bas Bascora. It's from a plant swap. I might have to move this to the new pot. So I have this information with me. Keep that here for for now. And then let's look at the roots. This is probably a good. Look at that. Okay, for this actually, you know what? This might be good for it because it's so tall. You see that? There's a lot of air railroad trying to come out. So this is going to be a very good pot for it. Just using my aeroid potting mix for this and whatever was laying on the table. We are on a roll now. Yeah, it's not the best looking. I don't like plants in this pot per se, but it's sufficient and you can see the roots. Oh my gosh. Okay. And this might be getting a bit too much light. If you want your anthurium to have more darker leaves, like a green velvety leaves, give them not low light, but don't give them in like a super bright indirect light situation. There's a syngonium. I believe this is a moonshine. Look at the roots here. Uh, it's, it's very thirsty actually maybe because it's got so much roots here. And I'm actually very confused. I don't know what to do with this one exactly because it's so long, like this, because we propagated. So let me see if I can lay this on it. I can't. It's just gonna stick up on the side like this. Terrible looking. Um, what I might do, might be a bit drastic for some people. And I move it to one size bigger pot. And then, guess what I'm gonna do? Yes. What I'm gonna do is, It's a growing eye, I see it. See, this is trying to put out something from here. I'm gonna cut it above it. Okay. And then this one is looking a little bit interesting. There's two vines coming out of this. I might bury it on its own. So it's gonna be its own plant. So this, where we made the cut earlier, that's gonna put out a vine or maybe multiple vines. So this might become a bushy plant, but it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take like, three to four or five, six months to become like a beautiful pot of syngonium. But I'm very patient. Next, we've got a philodendron. I believe this is a white knight. 
This is the leaf that we propagated from and this is a new vine that came out of it. There's two reasons possibly why this is like a weird color, this is light in color. This is probably because it's got chlorosis, maybe not enough nitrogen or maybe it was given too much light. So it's gotten like such intense bright indirect light that it doesn't need to produce as much chlorophyll. So it feels like it just needs to pr produce minimal chlorophyll to sustain its life. For this one, it's actually pretty dry. Something died in there. Uh, I'm gonna just bury it deeper in and then you're gonna use whatever media there is so that this can root into it. But this is dry. Uh, we watered this this morning, but this plant now is bone dry. So we're just gonna add media to hold on more moisture. Again, the target of today's video is so that we don't have to water our plants twice a day so that they can get enough water to get by in a day. There you go. Now this next one, this Hoya, Pachyclada, uh, if I'm not wrong. This fell right out of the pot. Look at that, it's not doing well. So with this one, this is going to be a more like a rescue because it doesn't have enough roots to support this whole vine of plants. It's becoming thin here. I'm just gonna cut, cut. I'm gonna stick this in water to let it rehydrate and root and turn into its own plant. This is pretty much too far gone. The leaves are very dry. I might actually just throw that one away. This one can still live. This may be one cutting, one Hoya cutting. And this one I'm gonna just throw away as well. So there are a few cuttings. I'm gonna root them in water because this is the only way that this cutting here can survive with only this amount of roots. So I might actually give this a new pot. Yeah, see, this is actually mostly media and not a lot of plant material. This is actually beautiful Hoya, but I'm gonna give it a new situation. Very new situation. Maybe a small pot like this will just do well for them. Look at how much nicer it looks now than before. It does not have a lot of root system. It doesn't need a big pot. So that was a mistake, unfortunately, having it in that, in that pot. So I'm gonna just jam this with aeroid potting mix and then water this probably every day because it's on terracotta pot. But Hoyas, easy to overwater them, especially a succulent. Oh my God, I cracked something. Especially a succulent Hoya like this, it's very easy to overwater them. Yeah, but there's many living in one pot, so they, this one might actually drink up more water than, than like a, a Hoya living alone. And look at this beautiful pink princess. I got this from a tissue culture. I'm gonna link that video up above if I can, but uh, let me take this out of the pot and study it. Good, no root rot. I'm gonna take the media completely out of the pot. I'm gonna bury this back in. And this time I'm going to actually add the media back on top because I saw that there's some aerial roots sticking out on top. So I do wanna make sure that this is rooted into the media as well as possible. And then I am all set. This is a simple repotting. See, before this was actually a little bit higher up on the pot and now it's a little bit deeper in the pot. It's gonna love that. This is a anterior maroon pea, Luxurians ex papile laminum from Mr. Eddie Pranotto. This is a dear anterior for me. But here's the thing, with Eddie's plants, I try not to mess with it because his potting mix is so good. He uses a lot of really good stuff in his potting media. It's fermented. Uh, I do have an episode where I talk about his potting media, I tour his, his uh, sh nursery. This is just sauce, what do you call this, sawdust? Yeah, maybe just for aeration down below so that it doesn't pull too much water. So I'm gonna try to repot this. Maybe this time I wanna do plastic because I don't wanna water this as too much, too often. Yeah, this will do well in plastic. See, that's actually still enough height. For it to grow into. All right, there you go. I think it's gonna really love it because before this plant was really like way up, way up there. So there's actually a whole lot of nodes that wasn't in the contact with potting medium. 
this is a philodendron luxuriance from Equigenera. It's curling in on itself. There's infection going on on the leaf. This is all like bacterial, fungal infection. It's actually very dry in there all the time. So I don't know what to do with this. I'm still waiting on the new growth, but I think, I don't know, does it need a new pot? Is it ready for a new pot now? For like proper potting mix? Maybe, you know what, maybe. Because it is drying out a bit fast, so I'm actually going to bury this a little bit deeper. Because all these has the potential to put out aerial roots, all these nodes, as you can see here. So I do want to make sure that it's a little bit deeper in. But I want to be careful with watering this, because the moss down below, it can accumulate too much water. Be careful, Sean, with, with this one. And that's done. See how deep this is rooted? So now, oh, actually, you know what, I might, I don't know if I should, I might even like give this neck a little bit of a moss so that it can kind of root the aerial roots. You know what I mean? And there you go. Wish me luck on this. This is a Philodendron luxuriance, if I didn't mention this before. All right, here's a variegated monstera. The leaf died off, but then a new growth should appear from here. Look at the variegation. It's actually quite a beautiful plant, but I suspect because it's living upstairs where a lot of plants dry out too fast. I suspect this might be too dry for it. Yeah, hang on, let me feel this. Yeah, actually it's lost a lot of roots. Yeah, it's lost a lot of roots. I don't know from what, maybe it dried off, but it lost a lot of roots. So you know what I'm gonna do? I don't know, hang on. Let me check the media inside. It's actually moist. It's moist. I think uh, there's a lot of perlite down below. It may be seeping too much water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it in here and this is when we can monitor the roots better because this is such an important cutting for us and then start planting it in. Yeah, before I think it was just not enough roots but there might be some moisture pooling down below so the plant is not taking up all that moisture but now we can actually see the inside. This is how they like it to be. Yeah, I'm going to be going to eye out for this one. All right, this is a very important anthurium from Cartel Daon. They gifted this to me from a little seedling. But the media here is a little bit porous. Do you see that? This is very porous. The roots are beautiful though. So let me see what I'm gonna do. Hang on. I was gonna repot this in aeroid potting mix, but you know what? I might have changed my mind. Now, it's very fast draining. It's a lot of air movement going on inside there. But what I can do is, if it's drying out too fast, just seal the top with moss. Because what's happening is that when the top is a little bit humid, it's going to seal in that humidity down inside, but there's still airflow, so you're not going to rot this plant. So this is a good hack. And this is something that a lot of anthuriums really love. They have these really thick roots that they just love to spread out inside, get in between the cracks, and it can you can absolutely rot them easily if your media gets compacted. So this might be a good compromise to have. Tag goes back in. And I'm going to actually start to fertilize this. Let me check out to see if there are any pests. There might be pests, maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to use pesticide and a bit of fertilizer here. This is an Anthurium king of spades. It might be getting a little bit too much light. It's a little bit bleached out. This is what the inside looks like. I don't know, well, hang on, let me see. What I'm gonna do, I might do this, is take off some of the bottom moss. Checking it for, I think it was actually root rotted at some point before, I remember that. A lot of leaves actually turned yellow and fell out, but look at these beautiful roots. This is so pretty. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, plant this back down here, not compacting it. Do not compact it. And then I'm gonna take some of the previous moss and like, Plant it back up here. Just covering like that little bit of root here. Just covering that like a blanket. Like mommy's blanket. <laughs> Just tuck it in a bit. This will make a world of a difference for them. But do not compact it. They don't like to be in compacted soil. All right, this is a philodendron. I can't remember. This is a silver, uh, like a mommy maybe. This is dried out, I think. The roots are dead, I think. And what I might do is probably just put it in moss. And rehab it in moss because I think this is way too dry for it. And I'm gonna have like the moss come up to like here because it's aerial roots coming out from this part of the plant. Right now the roots are depending on the old stem where the leaf has died. Do 
do not compact it. Do never ever compact your moss. But I want to keep it humid. Keep this one humid. I use the mist setting when I was uh, when I'm spraying them down on my hose. So it's like nice and misty. Next we have another mummy and the new leaf is weird. Like look at this, this might be burnt. Even though it's not in direct sunlight, but it's gone very, very, very bright uh, indirect light up there on my balcony. So maybe it would not appreciate it. Uh, the roots are okay, but it's time to give it a bigger pot, I think. These guys are fast growers. They are very fast growing, very forgiving, very easy. But because of that, I have a lot. <laughs> that are unsold. These are actually hoarded. I have uh, like, let me see, I have one growing in my garden already behind me. Yeah, don't give it too much media at first. Just use a little bit. That's when, as the plant goes bigger, I'll start adding more on it because you don't want to overwater your plant. And then this may need fertilizing as well because I don't think it was fertilized before. This is a uh, Sangonium, I don't know, tricolor or something. And the, the lady holding the camera just told me that everything is so dry. Why is everything so dry? I don't know. So this, actually, I might put this in water because I think it would be so much happier in water. And this one, I may actually fill with moss to just keep encouraging new vines to grow out of this. Yeah, but this is so dry. This is actually in full moss and was actually really well watered this morning. So everybody's home environments are different. When you move home, so when you give a plant or you bring back a plant, yeah, you may have to adjust plant care according to your living condition. This is a fuzzy schismatoglodus. Look at the new leaf that's coming out. This is so cute. But this one I think is always thirsty too. It's always drinking water. And let me check out the inside. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the anthurium trick here. I'm going to just pot it back in a bit deeper this time. But then I'm going to sneak in moss. This is so I don't damage the roots. The roots are probably really well adhered to the current. Hang on, let me shred this a bit. It's a little bit too, too dense. Uh, what do you call this? The roots are already taken to the media. If you unpot it, if you change the media completely, it will be very stressed out. So this is a very, very nice little compromise. So this can actually hold on to moisture a bit longer, keep it humid inside, not dry out too fast. And hopefully this will perk up. This is a beautiful fuzzy fuzzy plant. And I don't know, this is like not for beginners. I would say I have struggled a few times. I brought it back from the brink of death more than once. But here we go. All right, here is a massive Anthurium viterifolium. Beautiful anthurium, easy to grow and they look really nice indoors. They can grow really well indoors as well, but it's so thirsty. It dries up like way too fast. Look at, look at these roots. Look at these naughty roots over here. How cute is that? So we're gonna, we, we should wet it and then take it off slowly, but I don't have the time. So let me take it off, sorry, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna move this into a plastic pot. I like it in terracotta, so what we can do is possibly move it into a plastic pot first and then put the plastic pot inside the terracotta. It's a bigger pot here. And then what I wanna do is use a bit of aeroid potting mix below first. Prop it up a bit. All right. And then just fill around, around the sides with aeroid potting mix. This episode should have been a game show, like how to repot a hundred plants in two hours. <laughs> there should be a contest on that, like a reality TV show where people have to repot plants in a given amount of time. <laughs> like those cookout shows that you gotta propagate 500 Hoyas and the winner will have to hit a buzzer. And okay, I think we are good with, with the current setup. Uh, if this dries out a little bit too fast, as it did before, I'm top dressing this with a bit more moss because that's what I did before. And this is flowering and I want to take off the flower because it's going to expand too much energy on the flowers. That's a flower, this is a flower, and then there's one more over here. This is a flower, so this needs to come off. All right, and this is a peperomia and the problem is it's too deep. Look at that, there's a main stem here. This is too deep in there. I need to move the media so it's like uh, higher up. On, do you know what I mean? Because the plant is really suffering from that. So, uh, 
Let me get a plastic pot. Let me get the plastic. So I'm gonna take off the bottom soil, put this back in there, and then bury it with soil. So then all that stem can actually root, and then it will produce much, much nicer leaves after that. This is my general purpose potting mix that I'm working with now. I've actually been meaning to do this for a long time, but I haven't because I've been busy with a lot of the other contents and also the renovation. So glad I got around to do this. And also that terracotta pot, it was drying out way too, too much for this plant in, that, in the location that I had it. All right. Brand new start for this fella. Uh, but look at this <laughs> tiny, tiny little fella here. Uh, I think I might actually just use this pot that I have. Don't want to overwater it, but this is a Syngonium milk confetti. How cute is this? This is the cutest thing <laughs> I've, th I've seen all day long. And then again, the trick is to, I'm gonna back up a bit, water it with the same water with that, because it's got all that rooting hormone still in there. It's used to the temperature, it's used to the uh, acidity, the pH value, and all that good stuff. It's got a Cissus Amazonica. Oh, let me see what it looks like in there. The roots look weird. It's really, really weird, but the growth is even stranger. Like they're starting to give me long vines with short leaves. I don't know what to do with this. I don't think this needs more potting media, um, but it is giving me weird vines. So with this one, I don't know, comment down below if you know how to care for this. It might be a bit too much, but then it's not root bound. As you can see, it's not root bound in there. So comment down below if you know how to do this, but I took a few vines to propagate just to experiment a, bot, a bit more with it. But I'm gonna leave this one alone as it is. This is an Apischia. Actually, this needs to be pruned a little bit. This one is actually bendy, like this vine here. It's got a stolen, these things are called stolons, these babies. And we call this growth habit stoloniferous. And actually, it's flowering, ta-da! It's very similar to the African violet flower because in the same family, there's a bit of that glistering silver in the, in the middle of the flower. Look into its eyes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so this needs to be pruned. I'm gonna be pruning it carefully, but today's video is all about repotting. And I have a tip for a fish guest because they grow like this. In nature, they actually are crawlers. They are not trailing like this, but imagine like a whole pot like this. This is how we grow them, why we love them around the garden. But what I want to do is this, just to kind of take these babies and circle them back into the pot because these will turn into full plants. And then when you have a full pot on top, that's when you let it trail down. You don't want to let it trail down when it's so scraggly right now. With that being said, I guess, I mean, there are a lot of plants that I need to repot, but I'm having a backache. We've been shooting for about an hour now and the ladies are also very tired. So we're gonna call it a day. We're gonna finish this up tomorrow off screen. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of plants that we need to save and rescue. So I'm gonna bid you farewell now. Thank you so much for watching. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. Feel free to DM if you, if you have any questions about plant care and propagations or if you like this format, this video format where I have one of the ladies film for me, let me know. If you, or if you like it when I film by myself, do let me know also. But then I hope you guys are doing well and take care. Bye.